I would be willing to bet that this little device right here is one of the most misunderstood things in all of saltwater aquaria. And if you have one of these, there's a really good chance that you are calibrating this incorrectly and your salinity is actually not where you think it is. Let's talk about it. All right, so we add a little RODI water and we close that, take a look, and yep, zero. All right, good to go. That was in fact incorrect. There are a few refractometers out there on the market that are for seawater specifically that can be calibrated to zero in their calibration path. The rest of them are basically bricks refractometers that measure salt water, which is not the same as seawater, and they are not supposed to be calibrated to zero using RODI or distilled water, despite the instructions that come with them saying that you can. And so here's the problem. This is a precision instrument, right? And later in the video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how you can make your own calibration solution or, and even talk about some of the other options you have for checking the salinity of your aquarium. I've been using that refractometer I showed you just a few minutes ago for the last 15 or so years. And before that, I had a different one that was just like it. When I got this one and periodically throughout the time of owning it, I have always calibrated it with a calibration solution such as this one. Now there's a lot of these out there on the market and for seven bucks, this is a good way to go. But sometimes these are even inaccurate. So what do you do? Well, you can go down the rabbit hole of making your own solution. You could choose one of the other options, or now you could even get your salt water verified through ICP testing to make sure that your refractometer matches the actual real salinity of your aquarium, which is what I did most recently with mine, just to check and make sure that what I'm reading is what it really is. Now, the problem with a precision instrument, when you calibrate it to a number that is not the target measurement number, is they're almost always going to have a percent error of deviation away from that target measurement once you read the device at that measurement. It's a bit like this, right? So you measure down here at zero, but your target measurement is up here. The closer you get to that target measurement, the higher the error difference is going to be. So the farther away from where you initially calibrated your measuring, the more error there is going to be. And when you calibrate a refractometer to zero that's not meant to be calibrated at that number, you could end up with a three to four part per trillion difference either up or down above your target measurement. And what that equates to in specific gravity is 0.002 to 0.003. So when you're trying to measure your tank and you're shooting for 1.025 or like me, if you're going for 1.026 in your tank with your specific gravity, that error could actually mean that your tank is at 1.029 which is way too high for keeping a reef tank. But it could also mean that you're at 1.023 or anywhere in between. And this is the problem with calibrating one of these using RODI or distilled water. And God forbid you try to do it with tap water. Don't do that ever. Don't just don't even don't even rinse it off with tap water. Now, most of the information that I just stated to you was compiled and put together in an article by a fella named Randy Holmes Farley. And I put a link down in the description to the article that he wrote that was explaining all of that stuff. And you can find that there if you really want to dig into it, into the science more heavily. Having said all of that, precise salinity and being able to correctly measure your salinity is basically the cornerstone for a saltwater aquarium. Without proper salinity, we are getting off to the wrong foot right from Jump Street. So you want to make sure that's correct. Now, having said all of those things, stability is always king. It has been king. It always will be king. So if your tank is running at 1.024 and you keep it steady always at 1.024, you're not going to see any problems related to salinity. And the same with 1.025 or 1.026. Or for those of you who measure in PPT, if you're at 34, 35, or 36 PPT, you're going to be okay as long as you keep it stable. But we really want it to be 
where we think it is. And there's a lot of reasons why, but one of those reasons is because the trace elements of the aquarium, both macro and minor trace elements, a lot of those are heavily based on salinity. So if your salinity is high, those will be a little bit higher. If your salinity is low, those numbers are going to be a little bit lower to a point at least anyway. So if you incorrectly calibrate your refractometer to zero, and let's just say your particular one has a three PPT difference, that's going to mean that your salinity could be anywhere from 1.023 to 1.027. We'll just say it's 1.023. Now, you may potentially have a situation where your calcium is always a little lower than it should be, magnesium, alkalinity, and everything is all just a little lower than it should be because your salinity is lower than you think it is. So you're dosing calcium, magnesium, and alkalinity to bring it up when otherwise you might not have to do that if your salinity was actually where it should be, 1.025 to 1.026. See what I'm saying? And hey, if you're finding this information useful, if this is not something you've heard before, or even if you have heard it and you agree, why not drop a subscribe to the channel if this is your first time here? I make videos on a weekly basis and run the most respectful reef keeping community on the internet. You can find us on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Discord, and here on YouTube. The links are in the description. So now that I've convinced you that we need to properly calibrate our refractometers using either a solution that's been purchased like this one, or a solution that you have made very carefully at home following the directions very carefully to make sure that it's correct, we have to go over how you actually calibrate the darn thing. So there's a couple of different types of refractometers. Mine, you can see right up there, it says ATC. That means automatically temperature correcting, right? So, and it, that does exactly what it says. In that case, when you put your calibration solution or you drop your salt water on this device, on the prism right up here that we're going to talk about in a second, it's going to automatically calibrate for that temperature change and you don't have to try to match temperatures or weight or anything like that. But if you read through your literature and your refractometer is not an automatically temperature calibrating refractometer, there is an extra step that you need to do before calibration. And that is that you need to match the temperature of this to the temperature of this or the tank. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. One of my favorite ways to do, which I, I used to have one of those, I literally take the bottle, I float the bottle in the tank for about 15 minutes to make sure that my calibration solution is temperature matched to the tank. Then, I would take the solution, put it on the refractometer, close the lid, and I would wait about 30 seconds before I took my measurement. I still do that wait for 30 seconds period, even now when I'm doing it with this, just because it's habit and I think it might lend just ever so slightly the amount of you know stability to my measurements, but it's not required. But with the non-ATC one, you have to match the temperatures. If you don't, your measurement is going to be off because temperature matters. Now, once you have done all of that and you're ready to calibrate, you're going to peer through the eyepiece, correct the focus so you can see the numbers clearly. And if the break line on there, the difference between the blue and white is not at 35 PPT or wherever your calibration fluid says that it's supposed to be, you use a handy little screwdriver that comes with it and you turn this screw right here on the front of the device and it will move that line of difference up or down and you put it where you need it to be. Then your refractometer is calibrated and you can measure your salinity. Now, once you get that done, it's very important to keep your refractometer clean. So you're going to want to wipe that salt water off with a good clean cloth. And then with a cloth using RODI water, make sure you clean it real well, then dry it before you store it. You definitely don't want to just knock the salt water off and, and let it go. Also, when you get your refractometer shipped to you, whether you buy it new or you get it in a store or whatever, when you get it home, you must check the calibration before you use it for the first time. It, even when they say that they come calibrated, that motion of shipping those things across the country and sometimes even across the world can knock that calibration off. All that means is that they checked the calibration before it left the factory. All of that movement can make that change, 
especially the temperature swings of those things being in shipping containers in the sun and then in a building and then back in the sun and then back in a building again. Always check your calibration on a brand new refractometer before you trust using it on your tank. So earlier in the video, I said I was going to talk to you about making your own calibration solution that you know is going to be correct bar none. And you don't use marine salt for this, which is contrary to what you might think. You have to use pure sodium chloride. You have to mix 3.65 grams of the sodium chloride with 96.35 grams of purified RODI water. And you mix that solution up until it's totally dissolved. You let it rest until all the bubbles have been released. And then you have created your own calibration solution. I am not going to tell you how many times I had to re-record that because those numbers got transposed. Now, what I just mentioned, that, that little DIY recipe is a gross oversimplification of all of the information that I found on doing that. And I've known about it for quite some time, and I've never really dug into it heavily because I ICP tested my calibration solution, and it is dead on accurate. So I haven't had to go down the DIY route myself, but I probably will in the future. That information can also be found from Randy Holmes Farley, and there's a link in the description to an article that he wrote about that thing. At this point in the video, I would like to extend a massive thank you to my three new channel members, April, Michelle, and Rick. There was a few others before those, but I gave them the shout out on the Facebook group. So I just wanted to thank them. And if you're interested in becoming a channel member, you can do that by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button. I have five tiers of membership over there, starting as low as a dollar. And the more of you who do that, the more things I'm going to be able to do with this and take this sucker full time so that I can see you guys at Reefapalooza and Alcochella next year. Now let's talk about some other ways of measuring salinity in your aquarium. You can do a swing needle hydrometer. I personally don't like this option because even something just as simple as a few bubbles on the swing needle is going to change the measurement that this is going to give you. They have to be used exactly perfectly for them to not change. And there's even some evidence that the plastic used for the swing needle might absorb a little bit of water before it ever gives you a correct reading. So if you're taking it in the tank and out of the tank and in the tank and out of the tank, it may not ever be exactly right. I find that even though they do work, they introduce a whole lot of area for error, especially with new aquarists, and I would not recommend using one of these on your tank. The most accurate and arguably simplest option to use is a glass hydrometer, and this is basically just a little glass tube with a calibrated sheet of paper on the inside that is at an exactly perfect area right where it needs to be. Typically, in the best case scenario, you would use this with a graduated cylinder full of seawater or salt water from your aquarium, but you can turn all of your pumps off and let the tank become completely still. You put this down in the tank, it's going to sink down to whatever the salinity is. You read that on that line, and it's good to go. There is no calibration needed. It never changes. Just make sure you don't drop the darn thing because the glass is very thin and it's going to explode. But these are very simple to use and they work every single time. Doesn't matter what the temperature is. And that's definitely the way that I am switching to in the future. I'm just so comfortable with a refractometer, it just really doesn't ever bother me, and mine has been verified good. So I'm using it till it breaks. And the last other method for checking the salinity is with a digital pen or a digital salinity reader. These come with the same caveat that you have to calibrate them with a known solution before you can trust the salinity measurement that they're giving you. So it's arguable that unless you have verified the calibration of your calibration solution, that you could still get an incorrect measurement from those devices as well. That information is not that hard to find out there on the internet. It won't take you but a few minutes to find some people who checked their calibration solution against a known standard, and it was wrong, even on those expensive Milwaukee digital meters. Food for thought. 
The most critical factor in reef keeping is stability. But of course, we have to have our numbers where they need to be before we worry about keeping them stable. And once we get them there, that's when we start worrying about that. And proper calibration of your refractometer is going to go a long way into making sure you have your tank in that type of situation. Now, if you want to dig in deeper to the parameters of your reef aquarium and what they should be and how they relate to one another, check the video that's up on the screen right now. And there's another video right down here at the bottom, which is the one that YouTube thinks is going to be the best one for you to watch next. And I'm going to catch you over there.